This was and still is one of the most iconic rifles the U.S. military has ever seen and it played a very important role in the history of our country. Today we're going to be talking about the U.S. magazine rifle caliber 30 model of 1903 or as you might know it the 1903 Springfield. This is the rifle that brought the U.S. Army into the 20th century and led us through the first great war. The 03 Springfield is the rifle that preceded the M1 Garand. If you haven't seen our video on the M1 Garand, I will put a link to that at the top of the screen and in the description below, so make sure you check that out. In this video, we're not only going to talk about the 1903 Springfield itself and all of its features, but we're also going to be talking about the history of it. So if you haven't done it yet, guys, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below, hit that notification bell, and please give us a thumbs up. We really appreciate that. The M1903 was produced from 1903 to 1927, and then again from 1942 to 1945 during World War II. It is a bolt-action rifle, and it fires the 30 alt 6 cartridge from a five-round stripper clip. It's made of steel and a beautiful black walnut stock. It has a 24 inch barrel and it weighs in right around eight pounds. And in its day, this rifle was known as the rifleman's rifle because of its unparalleled efficiency and accuracy. Now during the Spanish American War, the American soldiers quickly realized that their trapdoor Springfields and their Krag Jorgensons were vastly inferior to the Spanish Mauser that was carried by their enemy. Now even though we won that war, it was obvious to the Army that it's time for us to develop a better rifle. And that's what led us to the 1903 Springfield. So in the years following, the Springfield Armory set out to develop a new rifle modeled after that Mauser action that was first developed in Germany. Now the action of this rifle is so similar to the Mauser, in fact, that we actually had to pay royalties to the Germans at least up until the start of World War I. Now guys, this is just a beautiful rifle. The way it feels in your hand, it shoots like a dream, and it's just oozing with history. But the 1903 Springfield didn't start out as the rifle that we know and love today. Originally, the M1903 was chambered for the 30 alt 3 cartridge, which was a 220 grain round nose bullet. It also had an integrated sliding rod bayonet similar to the M1888 Springfield rifle, but that didn't last long. The president at the time, Theodore Roosevelt, strongly objected to that rod bayonet. So in 1905, at his direction, that rod bayonet was replaced by the 16-inch blade-style bayonet, the M1905. The one I have here is an original. It was made by Springfield with a date of 1906. Now around that same time, there was also a change to the sights, but those weren't the only changes that this rifle would go through. A new type of bullet was quickly being adopted around the world. It was a lighter, faster spear point bullet, and it had a lot of advantages over that round nose bullet that we were using originally. So in 1906, the Ordnance Department developed a new 30 caliber cartridge that would eventually become known as the 30 alt 6. The 30 alt 6 would be adopted for all future M1903s and all the 1903s that had already been produced would be converted over for that new chambered cartridge. It was then after these few changes that the 1903 Springfield would take the form that we all know today. And it would pretty much stay this way until 1942. The M1903 was originally produced by two manufacturers, the Springfield Armory and Rock Island Arsenal. Then during World War II, two other manufacturers would produce the rifle, and those were Remington Arms and Smith Corona. Now, even though these other three companies did produce the M1903, it has been commonly known as the 1903 Springfield because Springfield was the original manufacturer and the largest manufacturer. The one I have in front of me today was manufactured by the Rock Island Arsenal in 1919. Now, the 03 Springfield has one of the longest service histories of any other military rifle in U.S. history. It was used in several wars and military actions from Mexico in 1916 to most famously in World War I. And of course, the 03 Springfield was still in use when the U.S. found itself in the Second World War. In fact, most of the soldiers who launched the first assault in Guadalcanal were carrying the 1903 Springfield. 
Now, although it would eventually be replaced by the M1 Garand as the standard service rifle, it would still continue service as the preferred sniper rifle and go on to be used in the Korean War and even some in the Vietnam War. Now, there were several variations of the 1903 throughout its lifespan. The first and the most rare is the one we've already talked about was the original rod bayonet rifles. Now nearly all of those were converted to the new specification. So finding an original rod bayonet 1903 is extremely rare and would be very, very valuable to collectors. The next would be the 03 as it's seen here which is also highly desirable. And that would include any that were made between 1907 and 1927, especially those produced during World War I. Now, a lot of people will tell you that it's not safe to fire a Springfield rifle with a serial number less than 800,000 or a Rock Island less than 278,000. And that was because those first rifles only had a single heat treatment on the receiver. After those serial numbers, they went to a double heat treatment on those receivers. Because of that, a lot of people will tell you that uh, rifles with serial numbers below those are not safe to shoot. Now, I'm not sure that I 100% agree with that. There have been a lot of people that have shot those occasionally and had no issues but just be aware that any rifles under those serial numbers do have the potential for that receiver to fracture under heavy use. Now, there were a lot of other variations, including the uh, 1903A1, uh, the National Match rifles, uh, some 22s, and even rifles that were adapted for use with the Pedersen device, which was a detachable 40 round magazine. But the most common of the other variations would be the 1903A3, which was manufactured during World War II. Now that rifle did have some differences, including some minor changes to the stock, but the most significant change would have been the addition of an aperture style rear sight. Then there were the 1903 A4s, which were specifically designed as sniper rifles. Now most of these would still be stamped 1903 A3 because if they failed the accuracy test, for sniper rifles, they would just be used as 1903 A3s. Uh, but the A4s would have been outfitted with a telescopic sight. They would also have a C-style stock that would have a little bit more of a pistol grip here on the stock. And those would have gone through a process to be hand selected as very accurate shooters. One other change of that rifle would be a change to the shape of that bolt handle so that it didn't interfere with the scope. Now, no matter which variation of the 1903 Springfield you have, you can bet that it has a lot of history behind it. This was and still is one of the most iconic rifles the US military has ever seen, and it played a very important role in the history of our country. Now that we know the history of this rifle, let's get in here and take a closer look at the features of it. All right, guys, now you can see this beautiful black walnut stock on here. Uh, this particular stock is actually a Remington stock uh, that was replaced at some point during World War II. At the back end of the stock here, you can see that it does have a compartment for a cleaning kit. And I do have a World War I correct cleaning kit in here. You can see that this rifle has sling swivels at the butt stock and here on the forend. The other swivel that it has up front is actually going to be a stacking swivel so you can stack multiple rifles together. You can see here that the hand guards are held on with a barrel band and they have this little spring clip that releases that for taking down the rifle. Now there are some pretty unique features back here on the receiver. This on off switch here is actually a magazine cutoff switch. Throughout US military history, it seems that the US military had a lot of concern about soldiers wasting ammo. That's why they held on to the single shot rifles for so long. And this magazine cutoff switch is reminiscent of that because what it does, it basically makes this a single shot rifle. So it stops the follower here from pushing the next round up. So you could hold several rounds in the magazine here in reserve while firing one at a time. And if you felt the need to switch over and fire the entire magazine, all you'd have to do, you would just flip this switch up and that would allow the bolt to go far enough back so that the follower will push a round up 
out of the magazine and you can cycle the rounds out of the magazine. Now that's a pretty unique feature that you don't see in a lot of other rifles. Uh, next here is the safety lever. You can see here that you have ready. That means you're ready to fire. And if you flip that over to safe, uh, it makes it inoperable. Back behind there is the cocking knobs. We mentioned that the rifle was fired from a five round stripper clip. And I'll just demonstrate real quick the way that works. Now the way that's gonna work is you're just gonna open your bolt. You slide the stripper clip down into this designated spot on the back of the receiver. And then you're just going to push the rounds out of the stripper clip into that internal magazine and then discard the clip. And then you're ready to fire. You can see here that this particular rifle has a beautiful receiver. You can see here on the receiver, it reads US Rock Island Arsenal model 1903, and then the serial number. Like I said, this is a late production for Rock Island. This receiver was manufactured in 1919, shortly after World War I. The rear sight here is a ladder style rear sight. There are several ways to use this sight. Most typically you'd use this notch here aligned with your bladed front sight. Um, you can also lift that ladder up where you can see all your uh, yardage readings. It also has a U notch here in the bottom and one here. So it's a fairly complicated sight, which is one reason why they switched over to that aperture sight in World War II. The front sight here is just a bladed front sight. And right under that, you have your bayonet lug. And the way that works is that loop there on the bayonet is just gonna fit over the barrel. And there's a spot here on the back of the bayonet that feeds right into that uh, bayonet lug. And then it just locks in place like that. To release the bayonet, you just have a release button here. You just press that and it lifts right off. As I mentioned before, this is an original bayonet manufactured by Springfield in 1906. Now the 1903 did actually have a very nice trigger pull. As you can see, this rifle is unloaded. Now just to demonstrate that trigger pull, it's just a very little bit of take up there and then it doesn't take much effort at all for that break. And I will weigh that with my Lyman scale so you can see exactly what that trigger pull weighs. All right, guys, now we have just barely scratched the surface of the 1903 Springfield rifle. So if you are interested in learning more about it, I am going to put some links in the description below for some great reference books that will tell you everything you need to know about this rifle. So in closing, guys, the M1903 Springfield is a must-have for surplus gun collectors and military collectors. Its service to our country through two world wars and beyond is just undeniable. Now, I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. If you haven't done it yet, guys, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below, hit that notification bell, and give us a thumbs up. We really appreciate that. And if you wanna help support the channel, if you wanna see more videos like this, you can follow us on Patreon. You can also visit pilotpatriotapparel.com. Thanks for watching, guys. Please like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you next time.